an inner healing tonight, healing emotional wounds, healings of emotional wounds. Everybody experience emotional wounds in their lives. Now, I want to draw that line on the board. Can everybody see that line on the board that uh, Rick drew? How many can see the line? Everybody, you know what I'm talking about. Draw the line. That's our position in Christ. That is, it doesn't move. Whether you are content or not content, that line does not move if you've given your life to Christ. Everybody need to see that. Okay, that'll help you through some depression sometimes. But that line stays there. You're still righteous. You're still a child of God, regardless of how you feel. But let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Measure yourself. 10 is the bottom, and you, let's just say we go from 10 on up to the line. That line. You are righteous. You're a child of God. Your name is written in the last book of life. Nothing changes that. Nothing, not even a, well, nothing changes that. But we are emotional beings. We're still in this flesh. And how many have you noticed that your flesh has not been redeemed? Raise your hand if you've noticed that. You're right. It'll act up sometimes when you don't want it to act up. But we're also emotional. We have a soul. We have a spirit. We have a body. We are emotional. And most, a lot of people, we, we gauge our Christianity by our emotions. No, look at the line. All your sins are forgiven. You're a child of God. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But you're sitting down here operating on 10. Now, 10 is the lowest. We'll, go, we'll put the 10 at the bottom. Everybody got that? What is the lowest? 10. We're going to work ourselves up. Now, from, starting from the bottom... Try to get in touch with your emotions tonight. From 1 to 10, who, who feels like they're on the bottom on 10? All right, now as I go up, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 4, and give me some more, 3, all right, 3, 2, 2, 1, good, that's good, all right, so remember that, how you feel has nothing to do with your relationship with God, you got to nail that down because the enemy will make you think, because you feel low, Somehow you're not right with God. No, that's just being human. That's just the human element that we all have and we all have to deal with. Okay? Now, we have morning people that get up real early. How many morning people do we have get up real early? All right. Do you enjoy getting up early? <laughs> you're just thankful to get up, right? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> we won't go too far on that. But I want you to see the line tonight. And so as you move along in life, there, there are things that affect our emotions. Everything's doing fine. You're on, uh, you're on, let's say, number one. Man, this is great. You get a telephone call. Okay? Something happens to one of your children. Let's say they in a car accident. Boy, your emotions can start fluctuating. You know, and all of a sudden you start thinking, well, are they dead? Well, we don't know. They, all I know is they were in a car accident. And they told me to call you. Gee, thanks. <laughs> it would have been best for you not to call me <laughs> until you got something certain. You know what I mean? So these things affect uh, our emotion. You get a bill in the, in the mail that you weren't expected, like you owe, see uh, in Roebuck, uh, $3,000. That would sort of upset some folk, wouldn't it? Huh? All of a sudden, you're on one. <laughs> boing. <laughs> Rock bottom. <laughs> $3,000. What do you mean, $3,000? I haven't been in belts in 30 years, and I'm not planning on going. 
going in there either. And then you find out it's all a mistake. And then you go back up to one. Boy, this is great. Hallelujah. I didn't owe nothing. I want to keep it that way too. So all of these things, you know, so let's go into uh, the healing of our emotion wounds. Are we ready? We got our paperwork. And let's go for it. This is one of the most vital and important areas of deliverance ministry that we cannot overlook. While it is important to cast out demons, it is just as important, if not more important, to minister to the emotional wounds. Emotional wounds are one of the most common reasons that deliverance can fail or demons seem to keep coming back and regaining uh, habitation within the person or around the person. Don't always have to be in the person. I need to make it clear that if you're going to be in the deliverance ministry, it is absolutely necessary that you learn about emotional wounds and how to bring the person to the point where they can receive inner healing from the Holy Spirit. Our goal is not to forget a hurtful event or trauma, but to receive healing for that event, where the Holy Spirit removes the stinger from it how many has ever been stung with it by a bee? Boy, that, that, you've got to pull that stinger out. That hurts bad for that event. Okay. When we look back upon a healed wound, we can see it in different ways because it has been healed and it is no longer painful to look back upon. All right. Identifying emotional wounds. You have to identify the problem. If something is manifesting in your children, you have to go and find out the cause. How many knows about the cause and effect? When you went to school, cause and effect. For every cause, there's an effect. You can't get by it. That's just the way it is. <coughs> so if you've got a problem, you've got to find out what the cause is. Okay? A lot of people are in depression today, not knowing that there's a cause why they're in depression. Okay? And it can come from many different things. It can come from the demonic powers coming against an individual. Uh, the, the mind has not been renewed, and they look at the negative all, all the time and not the positive, and it affects their emotions. Okay? The way you think affects our emotions, so we need to remember that. Okay, so we have to identify the problem and realize the need for inner healing. Below is a common list of common symptoms to look for in somebody who has emotional wounds. Our inner rawness. There's often a sense of inner rawness and hurt that does seem to go away. Now, you've got to identify. Everybody say, I got to identify. So when you sit there, just be honest. If you go to the doctor, you want to know what the problem is, and then you want to know what the solution is. Is that not true? Look at spiritual things the same way. Don't feel ashamed because you have a wound or a hurt or you resent something that somebody has done. That's all part of our makeup. So we need to understand that. And the devil comes in, and these accusing spirits come in and say, Look, look what you got. You're not sanctified, you're not holy, you're not a child of God. How can you be a child of God with that resentment in your heart? Anybody experienced that? Now, you see, I'm trying to get you to see the scene. Now, I don't want no resentment. I don't want to look uh, and, and feel bad about people. I want to love people. But we're all human, and we get hurt. We get these wounds. And the devil comes along and takes advantage of those wounds and hurts. Okay? All right. Now, let's get down to the... So, right now, is there a hurt? Do you, do you, have you, you know what you've been feeling. Is there last week, two or three weeks, four months? Might have been years. You, you've been feeling this rawness, this hurt. Uh, this particular... It might be against your mother or your father or, your, or the preacher or an elder or a deacon or... Or uh, your Sunday school teacher. It could be 30 years back, and that thing is still inside of you, festering. And the devil's taking advantage of it. Okay? All right. Irritability. Irritability. 
It's easy to become irritable with others, even if they aren't doing anything wrong. I remember Susan used to pour coffee, water in a cup, and that would send me up the wall. Can anybody identify with, with that? Art right, one. Art right, two. Or they might, you know, uh, I remember I was sitting in church one time. This guy comes and sits down. And he's chewing chewing gum. <coughs> Drive me nuts. I'm trying to worship God. <coughs> so I said to him, brother, would you get over there and sit over there? I, no, I'm just kidding. I just got up, went around, went to the bathroom, come back and sit over there. Hello? <laughs> Anybody ever experienced that in church? Honest people might as well be honest. Recognize that you're a human being and these things, but just keep blessing the people. Bless them. Bless them. I remember one time, I, I, our first daughter, we bought one of these little things that uh, you pull and it goes. <laughs> oh, if, hour after hour. <laughs> Cross the floor. She loved that toy. One day it disappeared. <coughs> <laughs> what happened to my toy? Mama, what happened to her toy? How many ever experienced that? You know, a toy that drives you nuts. Well, see, a lot of things uh, I didn't understand, and, and you didn't understand. You became a Christian. You grew up. You didn't understand about all this stuff that you had inside of you that you didn't know what makes you tick. You know what I mean? So see if you can identify, and, and, and then we want to make sure we know how to deal with it. Now, little of no tolerance. You have no patience whatsoever. Watch everybody raise their hand. Anybody in here like that? <laughs> I'm better than it used to be. Here's the way I am. I, I share my heart. You know, I just share my heart. You don't have to tell me every detail. You speak a few things, I got your picture. Anybody in there here like that, like me? I, I got the picture. And some people want to tell you every detail. Every T's got to be crossed. Every I's got to be dotted. Every got to be a period. Every end of the sentence. Question, I don't need, just, I got the picture. Sometimes Susan will be like that. I said, honey, I got the picture, babe. And she goes, I said, honey, I got the picture. I, I got the picture, honey. Anybody like that in here? You know, you know I don't need to spend an hour telling me what the because I've, I've lived 80 years. I've, I think I've touched just about every problem in people's lives that, that you can touch, Okay. So I understand, I know. Now, let's get on the answer. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time on the problem. L what is the answer? Everybody say, amen. Come on. Amen. I want to know the answer. Oh, Y'all not out there tonight. Come on, Willie, help me. Back me up. Back the preacher up. Okay, here. Amen. Amen. Come on, you're doing great. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so glad I got that out of my system. I feel better. <laughs> All right. Uh, Y'all pray about my humor. Now, I got to get rid of it. <coughs> All right. Feelings always rising up. Every time the person walks in the door, this feeling rises up in you. Whoop. Welcome to humanity. Well, it could be some type of, a, 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 that uh, that person sets it off. You might not even have uh, any grievance against that person whatsoever, but that person may represent somebody 20 years, like a teacher, that did something wrong to you and you got that e emotional wound down there and for some reason that woman or 
that man sets it off in you. Sometimes it's not the other person, but it is something in what? Us, okay? So you've got to learn that. Okay, now, feelings of anger, hate, resentment seems to rise up within you at the slightest offense from others. Am I hitting the any areas yet? When I get hot, I get irritated. <laughs> I mean, I may get irritated when you get hot. <laughs> it's hot in here, man. Turn the air conditioning on. <laughs> Come on, we're dealing with real issues of life. Laugh at yourself; it'll help. All right. So these things will just rise up. Why did that, you know? See, the enemy is so deceptive, and he'll get you to just run after these things or start pouting or I I don't want to, you know, all kinds of things happen. All right, let's move on. Oversensitive about an event in your past. Oversensitive about an event in your past. If there are events in your past which cause you to become very sensitive or angry, or even cause you, <coughs> turn the page, to lash out, then it is likely revealing a deep emotional wound tied in with that event or memory. See, now you want to identify these things. Good to see you. If you have a car that's running, that's not running right, you know, and every time you're going down the road, it coughs a few times. I remember some of those old cars we used to drive. They'd cough and backfire. And how many has ever had a car like that? You know what I mean? We thought that was a big deal, didn't we? As long as we had a wheel, we were happy. <laughs> but if you have a car that's not, not running right, how many would try to blow the car up, or would you just try to find the cause? I mean, that's simple. That's just a... But when it comes to these things that we're talking about tonight, we don't want to talk about them because they might not think I'm as spiritual as they thought, and I couldn't stand for them not to think that I was a... You know, that, oh, this would be horrible. Come on now, this is where we live. (laughs) All right, hard to forgive. Oh, skip that one, Bob. No, let's don't skip it. It becomes very difficult, if not impossible, to love and therefore forgive others. It can also be hard to forgive and love yourself. How many of you ever had that problem? Look at your pastor. I can love Susan. She's easy to love. But to love me, I'm rough around the edges. See, she's the rose and I'm the briar. Who can love a briar? A briar can't even love itself. Boy, was that deception. I mean, that's deception. If God can love you, why can't you love yourself? Are you basing your self-worth on your performance? Are you basing your self-worth on how pretty you look? And we're all pretty. And nobody would not dare say that I wasn't handsome. Well, that's good. Don't comment. <laughs> I'd love to see you all laugh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But that is a problem the problem with young people and children. They're trying to identify themselves. They're trying to find, who am I? Can I be loved? Can I love? We, we, th- there are certain things that we need. We need love. Everybody needs love. Say, say that. Everybody needs love. Okay? Now, the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, how can you love your neighbor? 
Now, we're not talking about a selfish, greedy love here. We're talking about agape love, respecting each other as God's creations, as brothers and sisters. When you read 1 John, you read that book. If you don't love your brother who you see, how can you say you love, you, you're, uh, love God whom you don't see? Boy, that's strong language. John has strong language. That's why I, I, I keep telling people we have to love one another because you're cutting the line with God when you don't love one another. How many understand that? Do I need to get those verses out? We all understand that? Yeah. Well, I don't like the way they look. We better love them. I don't like the way they eat ice cream. Love them. They, all, they always want to get on my ice cream. Love them. I don't care what they do. Love them. You don't have to agree with what they do or don't do, but love them. See, we don't have... Why do we have to argue and fuss? Why can't we discuss? Guys, I never thought of that, did you? You mean you can actually discuss things? In a lovely way, in a loving way? Do we have to throw frying pans and dishes at one another? It's quiet in here. You ever thought of that? But, but tell me why we argue. Something inside has been hurt. Something, they've touched that wound and we come up what? Tell me, we come up fighting. You, you got the picture? And that's a good indication if you can't sensibly sit down with somebody without pointing the finger and condemning and arguing and fussing, the chances are you've been hurt. And what do we do? We act out of our hurts and our wounds. Hello? Okay. How many of you know we got a problem with divorce today? Now, I know and I understand all about certain situations, and, and how many know I understand that? I mean, I've been involved in helping people in many areas, but there's just some ridiculous of the flesh just think it's, greener grass on the other side of the mountain let me tell you something it may be greener but think of the water bill all right let's move on from there it's just grass it may be greener but they got a higher water bill folks be content with who you are in god because you can't do nothing to make god love you any better And what we do, instead of believing that, we go to performance and become a, a worker at it. And I like to work, and I get a lot of pleasure of working and accomplishing things. Don't, don't, are anybody here like that besides me? One person, okay. Two person. Okay. But you can work your head off, and it doesn't make God any prouder or love you anymore. You, we get our self-worth from God, period. Not how we dress. It's not the suit that makes the man, it's the man that makes the suit. Now, don't get me wrong. Susan likes to fix me up. I can't argue with her. I look good. Tie on. They bought me a, hey, they bought me a, a bow tie. So you'll see me around the bow. Susan, my neck is well healed up. Uh, don't tell Susan it's healed. She made me wear a tie. But see, understand these feelings that you have because, yeah, all the way back to the left. Uh, these, we all have feelings. How many gets uh, hungry feelings? Yeah. How many's got hungry feelings right now? Full, okay. Full tank. So what do we do when we have these things? And we're going to get to that real quick, I hope. <laughs> all right, it's hard to forgive. Why is it hard to forgive? Because there's that wound inside, that hurt. <coughs> I can tell you uh, stories of young people that we have ministered to. This young one girl, I went to this uh, inner healing uh, uh, seminar years ago in Florida. Susan and me went. And I was in on this session with this one girl. Now, there are things that is hard to forgive. 
when you have maybe a father molests, molests a daughter, and this particular girl was molested by the father, she said, I cannot forgive him. But see, I know if she doesn't, I don't care how bad the trauma may be, the Bible says if you don't forgive, God will not forgive you and you'll be turned over to the tormentors. That's evil spirits. Do we understand that? That's just the way it is. And that's why God tells us to forgive, to keep yourself from being harassed by demonic powers. Okay? Now, we've all been hurt. We've all experienced what it is to resent people. Uh, we've all had to work through forgiveness. If you've had to work through forgiveness, raise your hand. Let me see your hands. All right. If you have never had to work through forgiveness, raise your hand. Some of you don't have a hand. Okay. But that's okay. You've got to work through it. And how many know it's not easy? It is not easy. So that's why we have to be patient with people. I have dealt with people that have murdered people. I think I've dealt with people with every type of problem that you can imagine over the years in our ministry. What about this young man that went in there and shot all those people in D.C. in the Navy Yard? How many remember that? It was on the news. It's still on the news. Remember this, what we do has a ripple effect. A husband and wife, well, we're going to get a divorce. Now, listen, I said before, I understand certain situations, that may be the best thing when people start, if the man is out there and he's playing along with other women and coming back and having, we're all grown-ups in here, so they're having sex with their wife, and they bring some disease to you, how many want to stay with that man? Hmm? Come on, look at me. Hmm? You can forgive him. You've got to forgive him. But you don't want to stay married to a man that's, that's going to bring you a, a, a sexual disease. And this is where a lot of women today, and men, Six months ago, I dealt with a couple like that. They don't come to this church. Some people come from other churches to be ministered to here because they don't want their pastor to know their problems, so they come to me and Susan and many times uh, other people in the, in the fellowship. So there's some hard things that we have to deal with, but you never condemn we always try to help people. God has not called me to condemn, but to plant seed, to water seed, to help people come out of their dilemma. And folks, I'm telling you today, over 50% of Christian couples are getting divorced. And can I, can I give you a quick answer? How many knows the answer already? Sure you do. Selfishness. Hello? My way or no way. How many has ever had to bend a little bit to keep the peace? <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I remember one time, that must have been about 12 years old. I was up on this garage. How many has ever played uh, cops and robbers and all? Or how many has ever played, period? <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy and me, <laughs> see, I was the cop, and I was up on this garage on the roof, and he was coming around this side. See, I saw him. I'm up there like that. Bang, bang, bang. I said, you're dead. Bang, 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 you're dead. I said, no, you did. No, you did. You did, you did. No, wait a minute, we can't be both dead. He wouldn't speak to me for a week. Oh, that little issue. I come by, come on out, let's play. 
He wouldn't even, his mother made him to come out. You go out there and you play with Bobby now. He's a good boy and he's handsome too. Play with him. <laughs> Mama made him come out and he come out. Good to see you, Jimmy. What are we going to do? Let's play cops and robbers again. I just reloaded my gun. <laughs> Can I be serious and still laugh? <laughs> it's so comical. When you look back on some of your, how many have ever looked back at some of your little, you thought, and you have to laugh now. You say, man, I was man, I Fighting over what? But I tell you, it grieves me. I'm serious about it. It grieves me to my soul for couples. And, it's, and I've had them back in my office. And I know I'm right. And, she, and he goes, well, I know I'm right. Well, I'm right. I say, you're both wrong. Let me tell you where you're wrong. You're not loving each other. Hello? That's where you're wrong. You're not love because if you love one another, you wouldn't treat each other that way. You don't even know what love is. Boy, sometimes no, calm down, Bob. Okay. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Hard to forgive. Mm. Let's read that. It becomes very difficult, if not impossible, to love and therefore forgive others. There are people that get to that point, and boy, that's a danger point. It can also be hard to forgive and love yourself. And, and many of us have, when God showed me, and, and I'm paraphrasing this, and it goes like, Bob, if I can love you, and you can't love yourself, something's wrong. If I can love you, which I do, and I loved you enough to send my son to the earth to die on a rugged cross. That's how much I love you. And you can't love yourself? We've had people that we've ministered to, seriously, take razor blades and cut their arms. Because there's something in all of us, in the human element, if we suffer enough, we feel we can be justified and God will accept us. That's dead works. That's how much they, they, they are you all listening? We live, we live in, a, we do, that's the kind of people we've dealt with over the years. Take a razor blade. This guy, or cut their leg. You go to South America and you'll find that people that, they, they'll get on their knees and they'll walk on their knees up these high steps to this tower and their knees are bleeding and everything and they're doing that figuring if they suffer enough God will forgive them of their sins. See, when we say we're saved by works or we're accepted by God by our works and our performance, we're saying the cross wasn't enough. Hello, are you out there? The cross wasn't enough. Anybody out there? Wave at me. You said that that's serious. The cross is not enough. Sisters and brothers, that is the only answer. It was at the cross that our Lord bore all of our shame, all of our suffering, all of our wounds, everything. We do not have to cut ourselves or torture ourselves or anything to make God love us any more than he loves us right now. Yes, even while we were yet sinners. Can we picture that? Go in our own way. He loved us. It's hard for me to fathom that type of love. I'll be honest with you. John had the same problem. What manner, what manner of love is this? And so when we come, listen, to this is important. When we receive his love, really receive it, Minus any performance, minus, oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a, uh, a yearly resolution. Anybody's ever made yearly resolutions? I've, yeah, I made them too. I still gain weight every year. <laughs> no. 
I'm accepted tonight by what Christ did on that cross. Absolutely, completely accepted. Minus any of my performance, not that I'm a pastor, not that I work, not this, not that, not, nothing else. What Christ did on the cross, for it is by grace, God's goodness and mercy that he has saved us. You might as well relax in it. Now, that doesn't mean we lay around and be lazy. No, works has its place, but it does not make us acceptable in God's sight. For we are put right in God's sight by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible plainly speaks, we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That means bought back to God. So, number one, everybody say, I accept myself. With all my hang-ups. Of course, you don't have many, but you might have a couple. <laughs> I accept myself. Don't move from that position. Draw the line, Rick. That's where it's at. See? Now, there's areas in our life that we need to shape up, right, Willie? Tell them. <laughs> That's a little something Willie has got going over you. Uh, anyway, we'll move on to that. All right. All right, here we go. It can even be hard to forgive and love God. even though he has done nothing wrong against us. See, it's a psychological deal here. Many times there are people that we have found because of the, the mistreatment of their father to them, they picture, well, that's the way God is too, like my father. No, friends. God is a loving heavenly father. And the Bible plainly says it's not his will that any perish but that all should come to repentance. And when, and when that revelation comes in, and I know it's come into all of us to a degree, but folks, I'm telling you, when it comes into us in a higher degree, you will feel so accepted that you can't hardly believe that you're accepted. Are you out there? It's amazing. No, you don't have to be better. Just get into the Word and see how much your Father loves you and love changes people on the inside out. I was, uh, <clears throat> Susan and me were dealing with this young girl, beautiful young girl, about 22 years old, beautiful. She had one problem. I said, well, what is your problem? She says, I'm ugly. Excuse me. You're what? I'm ugly. Can anybody digest that for me? Anybody can give me a little something on that? Let me save you. She felt ugly inside and yet beautiful on the outside. You can be beautiful, and most everybody here is beautiful. But if you feel ugly inside, oh, I just hit a nerve, I know. How many young girls have struggled with that? We spend billions of dollars in America to make ourselves look pretty on the outside. And yet on the inside we feel so ugly, unworthy. Oh, I'm touching things. I'm touching I'm touching nerves tonight. I mean, you know, I love you. You gotta reconcile that in your heart, in your mind. You're not ugly. You're not worthless. You're a child of the living God. And you're beautiful in his sight. Now as long as you go around thinking you're ugly, so is a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. God can't do nothing for you. You've got to change your stinking thinking. Nobody can love me. You know why that person says that? Because they don't love themselves. Once you begin to love yourself in the arena of God's love, the agape love, you can love others. 
The reason many people can't love others and show love is because they don't love themselves. I want to ask you a question. Have I hit any nerve cells tonight? Any, if I hit anything tonight, raise your hand. I want to see if I hit anything. Good. And you can relax in it, and it's okay. How are we going to be transformed? By the renewing of this old mind up here. The mind can be a tremendous servant to you. It's like your emotions. But it can drag you down. So as a man thinketh in his heart, in his mind, so is that man. All right. Hard to feel loved. It is hard to clearly see and realize the love of others and God in your life. You may be surrounded by people who love you, but it can be difficult to fully feel and receive that love. There seems to be a wall up that blocks the flow of love into your life. Meditate on that. Many times we get our self-worth by our parents or by our teachers. Many times by our peers. How many of you know the, there's a big problem in school today called bullying? Are we aware of that? And they'll pick on one child and just bully that person. And there's been write-ups in, uh, in the paper, which I don't take the paper, but in the, in the news that that kid would commit suicide. Beautiful children commit suicide because other kids, you're ugly, fatso, call them all kind of names and bully them and tear their self-worth down to nothing and they, they kill themselves. And you that have children are going to have to learn to be on the ball and make sure that you understand. This is very important for parents to understand what we have here. Because Susan and me had to deal with it when our kids were coming up. We had to deal with issues like that. And you really have to remember that. All right, let's move on. Hard to feel love. I ask you a question, do you feel love? You don't have to say it out loud, but do you feel love from your mate? Do you feel love from your pastor, from your teachers, your, your brothers and sisters in the Lord? And that's, that's so important. Because we cannot live without love and be in love. Now, we're talking about the agape love here now. We're not talking about the carnal, uh, lustful uh, love that most people think, well, I'm in love with her and she's in love with me, and it's really lust. Okay? Hard to feel love. When I had that spirit of rejection, and there was about... Two years that I went through a dark tunnel in my Christian life. We had ministered, Susan me had ministered to hundreds and hundreds of people for, for about 10 years, and all of a sudden, boom, the devil hit me, and I went down, I mean down to zero. I, was, I went under oppression. I mean, all kind of different problems. And if I did not know the Word of God, I'd have been dead years ago. Because the devil set out to kill me. And some of you know what I'm talking about. And you got to know, and you got to learn to fight. I'm talking about spiritual battle, spiritual praying against these principalities and powers. Because a lot of times they'll come against your mind. And they'll make you think all kind of stuff. Two things I want you to remember. Um, an imaginary... Fear can be just as scary as the reality of, of reality of fear. Okay? Remember about the rubber, rubber snake? Can I bring the rubber snake out? Huh? I'm going to see if Justin, Mary, you, you seen the rubber? You're not scared. Okay. I won't bring it out. I won't bring it out. Now, that rubber snake was under your bed, and you thought it was, hey, and you thought it was a real snake. 
you probably have another door in your bedroom, right? But it's a rubber snake. But your emotions think it's a real thing, and you act and react out of that fear. Do we understand that? And if you think if somebody's against you, you're going to act and react according to that imaginary thing that's in your mind that you think that person don't like you. Hello, are you out there? And you got to know that's from the enemy. See, the enemy always comes to divide. Always remember that, to kill, to steal, and to destroy our relationships with one another. I'll guarantee you, if we'd all be honest, we've all had imaginations in here about one another. Tell it, speak, preach it, Bob, I believe it will. <laughs> but that comes from the enemy. And all of a sudden, you feed on that imagination, and the devil keeps feeding you. And notice, how, how many of it in here we know? Thoughts produce attitudes. Attitudes produce emotions. It's in the blue sheet. And emotions produce Huh? And then a lifestyle and a behavior pattern is set up. Five things all we know. That's just the way it is. So if you want to overcome these, some of these things, you've got to get your mind straight. You've got to say, I love everybody. And you've got to monitor what you're thinking. Because what you're thinking is not all the time you're thinking. It's the enemy projecting these fiery darts into your mind. All right, let's move on. Most of you know that. Hard to feel love. I want to say that again. It is hard to clearly see and realize the love of others and God in your life. You may be surrounded by people who love you, but it can be difficult to fully feel and receive that love. There seems to be a wall up that blocks the flow of love into your life, into your life. The love's coming to you, but it seems like there's a wall. Now, what happens is, when we get hurt, what do we do? When uh, Adam and Eve got hurt in the garden by sinning, what did they do? They hid. Is that not true? You ever seen a little dog get hurt? They go over into the bushes or somewhere and hide. See, understand your feelings now. All of us, we want to get away from that. We're hurt. Our self-esteem has been wounded. See, women, because your men can close your ears. I'm going to squeal on the men. Women, listen. Men have a very high... Who said that? <laughs> That's pretty good. Tell them again. Everybody hear that? I'm too scared to say it. <laughs> you all don't want to trample on their ego. Okay, isn't that right, Scott? Us men, that way we're. No, don't, don't, don't do that. You got to know how to get around that to get what you want. Okay, let's move on. <coughs> all right, lashing out. When there is an inner wound that has festered, it becomes easy to lash out or have sudden outbursts of anger, hate, resentment. You may find it easy to lash out at people who love you and have done you no harm. I remember when I was, uh, God was healing me of my wounds, some of my wounds, and, and the anger would be so strong. I'd be driving the car. And boy, I wanted to put the accelerator wide open. I'm just, I'm being honest. Of course, you all know, never have these problems. I know that. And man, I'd beat on the steering wheel. <laughs> just to get that. How many ever done that? One, two, three. Just, <laughs> uh, we had, a, I had a, over in Meadowcliff Avenue, I had this big saw. Man, that thing must have weighed three or 400 pounds. Man, I got angry. I mean, I, don't, I can't remember what it was now. Uh, I think uh, Susan burnt my toast. That's what it was. I, I just, I just kidding. I <laughs> picked that thing up and I threw it out the back door. Oh, I feel better. 
But that's where I learned. Romans 6, 6, 6, 11, 6, 13. Bob Tilton died on the cross when Jesus Christ died. And I reckon myself to be dead indeed under that anger, but I'm alive unto God. I learned that, and I don't yield my members as instruments of unrighteousness, but I yield them as instruments of righteousness now. And the Holy Spirit always honors the Word. If you don't speak the Word, you don't give Him anything to honor. He'll honor God's Word, but He ain't going to honor your Word. Hello? So I learned, and I... I can't say I can't get, but it's not a, it's not a deep anger. I may get just, a, 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 I, don't, I don't know if I ever feel anger anymore. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but there's no anger. There's just love there now. It's just good feelings flowing out. You understand what I'm talking about? Just godly feelings. I feel good about myself. I feel good about Susan. I feel good about you guys. I love people. I ain't got no axe to grind. I'm not trying to become the greatest preacher in the world. I'm just Bob, a pastor, fulfilling my duties, loving God. And I got an inheritance kept for me in heaven by the power of God. 1 Peter 1, 4 and 5. I got an inheritance. You got one too. And it's up in heaven. And we don't have to try to outshow one another we don't have to try to be number one we don't we just be ourselves, love one another accept one another pray for one another help one another it's simple it is not complicated we don't talk about one another we love we appreciate one another it's so wonderful and we generate an atmosphere of love and the power of god comes in this place and does wonders and that's what we have here now there has been times in the past when you know, and you can feel it in the atmosphere. I can pick it up in the atmosphere. It, it's like a cross current. You ever, you ever felt that in your home? A cross current? One of the kids is agitating and there's a cross current. You can tell when there's peace. Peace. But you don't have all this stuff eating away inside. You're healed. You're healed. Now, I might be hitting some areas you need uh, help in. Write it down. Let us know. We can spend a night up here praying for one another, okay? Now, we're just, I've got five minutes. I've got to let you go. Well, let me say something. If, if you don't deal with the issue, then you'll always be bothered with it. Are you listening? You will always be bothered with it. You have to deal with the issue. If you have a hard time loving people, there's a cause for that. If you have a hard time loving yourself, there's a cause for that. Now, we don't know all the answers, but we know quite a bit because we've worked with a lot of people for 54 years. And I think we've pretty well heard it all. And if we don't know the answer, we'll try to get it for you. But we're here, our teachers and our ministers are here to help God's people. You know, it's amazing. I've seen this, and you have too. Somebody goes to the doctor, and, they, and, and they, they got cancer, and they come back and tell everybody, I got cancer. But you find out you've got a wound, and you don't, uh, and that wound came from your father, and you really hate him. Wouldn't dare bring that up. They might not think I'm spiritual. Why is that? Or I've got this problem. What, what is it? Uh, it it's lust. <sighs> lust. Wow, we don't know how to deal with that. None of our people ever had that. <laughs> is that not true? Come on, church, love me a little bit. Huh? How many did, no, I'm not going <laughs> to, don't go that way, Bob, okay, I won't go there. But I'm saying something, that, that we deal with people, they sit all their lives, they'll never get to victory because they're not willing to deal with the issue. Always dealing with the effect, but never dealing with the cause. And they'll always have the issue. 
How many love me just a little bit? Very little. It's getting thin in here. Isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's move. Forward. Feeling of anger towards God. How many people need to forgive God? You allowed my son to die. They get mad at God. I've dealt with people like this. Folks, God didn't take your son. The devil did. Don't you remember what Jesus said? Satan came to kill. You, you think that's true? Do you think Jesus makes lies? No, Jesus said Satan comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus said that. The Son of God, our Messiah, the Anointed One, Christ, said that with his own lips. He's come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that's what we're seeing in our world today. The God of this world, Satan, killing them by the thousands, by the hundreds of thousands, in many, many different ways. Okay, we're going to close. All right, let's move on real quick, uh, and then we're going to close. When a person has been wounded, it becomes easy to blame God for their troubles and hardships. This is the last thing that you want to do when seeking to be healed because it virtually puts a wall in your mind that can block the healing power of the Holy Spirit to operate. Although he desires to heal your wound, he will not override your free will, and if you hold hate in your heart against him, it can block his efforts to heal your wounds. Self-hate. Many times when a person is hurt from past abuse, they will begin to think that perhaps what happened to them was deserved because of something they did or the way they were. This is not true. Abuse is never acceptable. Even if a child was being out of order, parental love, discipline, and correction must never abuse. Easily frustrated because an inner turmoil that an inner wound causes, it is easy to become easily frustrated with everyday chores and responsibility. Okay, so we'll knock off.